Chile, a place of unimaginable beauty. The gateway to the Andes and the fjords of Patagonia, where volcanoes, glaciers, and mountain peaks collide, creating an aura of remote romance. Oh, and also fish, lots of them. If you eat salmon, you're probably eating the farm stuff. And if you eat the farm stuff, there's a good chance it came from Chile. Chile is the world's second largest producer of farmed salmon. Few people get to see it up close. We're heading out into the Pacific Ocean where glacial waters and ingenuity breed life. I'm Michelle, and that's my friend Brandon. We're two filmmakers on a journey to find untold stories of sustainable farming. And we think we hit the salmon jackpot. Okay, but first, there's a lot to understand about the industry, the challenges it faces, the criticism, and the road ahead. Almost since the beginning of the industry. This is Arturo Clement. He's an icon in the aqua industry, a true pioneer. He's the very first man to bring salmon farming to Chile. I feel a little bit fr frustrated. There is a lot of misunderstanding, and people really it feels that we are contaminating everything. And that's not true. Chile's salmon industry grew up quickly. 35 years ago, we don't have salmon in Chile because we don't have wild salmon. In just a few decades, it went from small scale to being a global player. It definitely it's not perfect. It's a good way to produce food but we need to improve year by year. Why can't we just keep farming in the waters out here the same way we've been doing it for years? We need to work much more in, on the environmental issues. That is the main goal in terms of sustainability for the industry. So we need a lot of challenge for the future, a lot of challenge. One of the big challenges is growing enough protein we have to feed a record number of people without growing our impact on the planet. For the growth of the population and the climate challenge we have, uh, salmon is a really the best solution. Arturo heads an organization called Salmon Chile. The group has a strong focus on sustainable fishing and addresses challenges facing the industry. Some companies have already declared that will be carbon neutral by 2030, and so we 2030. are. 2030? Yeah, 2030. It's a short amount of time. Yeah, it's very short. Arturo told us about his latest bold move. 23 companies who are part of the Salmon Chile group have agreed to work together to measure carbon, water, and energy use footprints and to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, hold on a second. All of that sounds great, but what's it even mean? What does a sustainable fish farm do differently? We went to one of the 23 companies, Ventiscaros. And on this floating farm, we met this guy, Manuel Cabezas. A nosotros nos importa porque nosotros no estamos solos. Nosotros compartimos el océano con, con, todo, con toda nuestra comunidad, compartimos el océano eh, con distintos países, eh, y es importante que todos colaboremos y todos pongamos de nuestra parte y hagamos nuestro trabajo con, con, con amor y, con, y con, con apego al medio ambiente. Y hacer las cosas cada día mejor. Here, Venescaros produces 4,500 tons of salmon every year. So let's go to where it all begins. This is the start, the hatchery. And all of those little alien-like balls, well, that's two million tiny eggs. That's eventually a lot of salmon started in a room the size of a fancy walk-in closet. The eggs hatch and swim around and grow here for about three months. After three months, they move to fresh water. They swim and grow in tanks like these and stay there for about a year. With all the tanks, we wondered about the demand for water. Is that sustainable? In this case, we learned nature provides the fresh water direct from a glacier. The same glaciers that created Chile's striking scenery millions of years ago still at work today. 
millions of pounds of food in this one place? Where else can you grow this much food in this small of a space? From here, they go to the ocean. You're looking at cages holding 900,000 fish, 14 cages in total, 64,000 fish in every cage. That's a lot of fish. Just looking around, we see so much, but what do we hear? What is this? It's, it's alimento. Manuel told us 200 kilometers from here, there's an elaborate feeding system that minimizes the impact of the seabed. It's the first of its kind in Chile, and it uses artificial intelligence. As soon as the fish stop eating, Venascaros stops feeding. You hear a lot about the use of fish meal and fish oil. Manuel told us that this salmon, a product they call Silverside, are fed with algae to reduce the amount of resources, specifically fish meal and fish oil, that they pull from the ocean. It's like this. When you farm salmon, you still need to feed those fish a diet rich in omega-3 fatty acids. In the ocean, omega-3s come from algae. Zooplankton eat the algae, then small fish eat the zooplankton, and larger fish, like salmon, eat the smaller fish. Here, instead of pulling those little fish out of the water, they use algae in the feeding process. Y eso es beneficioso tanto para los océanos como para para nuestros peces porque hemos reemplazado el omega 3 por otra fuente. Ya, eh, no 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 lo sacamos del alimento, sino que utilizamos un reemplazo de una excelente calidad. Ten months or so later, it's harvest day and the process speeds up, way up. From the time the fish arrives here to the time it's filleted, just 15 minutes. And we saw something else worth mentioning. Zero waste, and I mean zero. The packaging is 100% recyclable and biodegradable. And this might look like waste, but it's not. All of the fish gets used Everything is recycled, even what looks like scraps. The waste is used as raw material for fish feed, for fish oil, for pet food, and omega-3 capsules. We met Igor Stack outside the packaging facility. He's the technical manager at Ventiscaros. La idea que de aquí el año 2026 nosotros logremos reducir al cero por ciento de envío de residuos a vertedero. So why is this so special? Why go to all this trouble to feed, to manage waste, to reduce the resources we pull from our oceans? Me siento orgulloso de lo que hago. Sí, totalmente. Siento que estoy siendo un aporte no solamente a la salmonicultura o a la industria, sino que también un aporte al planeta. More and more people really want to know where their food comes from. We're lucky to see such an innovative operation to see our food in all the steps of the process, to see there is so much love for our planet. And this is just one operation. I think so the challenge is for the next generation of people that is working in the salmon industry to do much better and to improve the value for all the people. What emerged from our journey was a new vision for the world, where our real strength is about each of us doing our part the experience you had to visit the industry and to see how it is produced, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Because it's normally it's not easy to imagine how farm salmon is produced. But when People you see, know. yeah, when you see how it is, you feel much more comfortable eating this salmon than before, probably. We came to this remote corner of the world fishing for untold stories. We found people doing their part to feed us and to look after our planet. This is a problem that must be handled by every person in the world. Everybody has an impact, uh, everybody. And, and, and if everybody feels that they have an impact, then we can do it. <laughs>